Welcome to episode 81 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. We got the Instagram live audience here, and today we're talking about a brand in shining armor. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. The moment of clarity this week is that in life, in business, we think of things as B2B and B2C, right? B2B is business selling to a business. B2C is business selling to a consumer. I heard a great phrase this week and it's B2H. I didn't come up with it, but B2H and that's business to human. And the moment of clarity is if you are selling or promoting or building any type of organization, you're not selling or promoting to another business. You're not selling or promoting to an end consumer or a retail customer. You are selling and communicating with a human. So if you're doing that, don't think in terms of B2B, B2C. Think in terms of business to human. There's nothing more in line with the message of building a good brand than knowing that you need to build a human connection and not a sale. That's the moment of clarity for this week. I'm so excited for what he's gonna show me. Hurry up and show me Paul's pick. Okay, Paul's pick this week is Players Weekend for Major League Baseball. This hat, I just got it. It's Philly's hat. It's a special edition hat for Players Weekend. And Players Weekend, I think, is a really uh, smart thing for Major League Baseball to do because they changed it up a little bit and are kind of building the brand out of each individual player, which where we kind of know sports is going anyway. People are fans of players, not just teams. So Players Weekend is a weekend that celebrates the individuality of the players. All the uniforms are all black or they're all white. It's really cool. And in, on the back of the jersey, instead of the player's last name, it's the player's nickname. So our boy Broad Street Bryce Harper just says Harp on the back. And a lot of the other players, really colorful names, a lot of fun for the fans, building out the personal brands of the players. Smart move by Major League Baseball. So Players Weekend is my pick for this week. This is the third in a three-part series. Uh, we did parts one and two the last two weeks. And if you haven't seen them, it's really good to catch up with those two because this is kind of going to be the punchline to those two. But even if you're just listening to this, um, I'll do a recap for you. Last week actually generated a lot of buzz. So um, I'm recording this show now on a Thursday because I usually record the Thursday before the week before we launch it. So we actually just launched the last version episode 82 days ago. And it's already getting some really good momentum and chatter going on, especially on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, I hope you like reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn because a lot of meaningful conversation is starting to go on there. And, you know, in just the last day and a half, um, the, the podcast has a over a thousand people that have viewed it and watched it organically uploaded on LinkedIn. So it's cool to be building out another viewership uh avenue there but also there's a lot of great meaningful conversation in the comments going on about what we talked about and so let me recap that a little bit so oh actually one little thing i have to somebody commented my pick paul's pick for last week was cafe racers and we didn't show any cafe racers so let's show some cafe racers right now in case you missed it last week okay a little aside let's review what we talked about the last couple of weeks industries disrupt and the marketing industry is under a major disruption and the agency model is a big part of that. Like, look, things go through progress and time. I just saw a great uh, obscure video of Seth Godin, uh, somebody I, I follow dearly, follow dearly. Basically what he said, he said the record industry used to be perfect. And he's holding up a record. He's like, this is a record album. This industry was perfect. If I made music, I'd put it on this record. And then if somebody bought it and liked it, it would wear out and they had to buy another one. And if they gave it to their friend because they liked it so much, they wanted to share it. What well, now they didn't have one. So they had to buy another one and to buy it. They would go to a store that sold records that the record company didn't have to pay for, but they sold their product. And to promote that product, radio stations played the music and promoted the music, not costing anything to the record company for free. Basically it was a perfect industry, but then what happened? We all know what happened to the music industry technology came into play and sharing came into play. And, you know, instead of making money by selling albums, bands begin to make money through touring and selling merchandise and VIP experiences, right? A perfect thing just got ruined. 
the automotive industry has been in the same boat, right? It was perfect. The dealers had all the info. They marked the cars up to whatever they wanted and the people would pay it. There was no information. Oh, that perfect model we know is just straight up demolished. Let's talk about the agency model that has been in place for many, 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 many years. Let's run ads and let's charge you, Mr. Company, a percentage of that ad spend as my fee. So if you spend 100000 in advertising, right, I charge you 30%. I know what my margin is. And then I try to manage to deliver those services that you're asking for with as little of that 30000 fee as possible to maximize my profits, right? And that's just how it was. TV, billboards, print. And then we transition into this digital age where now we're running advertisements on digital platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Also still running traditional ads, TV and billboards, but the pricing model in a lot of cases hasn't changed. And that doesn't work because a percentage based fee on a digital ad spend presents an inherent conflict of interest for the agency. And I'm not saying the agency people are bad. A lot of good people running agencies that run like this, but I'm saying there's an inherent built in conflict of interest in me never being able to tell you to lower your ad spend because then I'm telling you to lower my company's revenue. And that goes one step further when I talk about the fact that whenever you have to spend money to advertise your business, it's essentially a tax. Because if your brand was super strong and people just wanted to buy from you, then you wouldn't have to pay to advertise as much. And now it's like if my content is just better and more engaging and more empathetic and people wanna watch it and share it and be entertained by it, even if I'm selling a product, but if I make great content, well, guess what? I have to spend less money on advertising because organically people share it. And what value is it for me as an agency that bills as a percentage of ad spend to make you better content that gets shared organically that you don't have to buy an ad. And if you don't have to buy an ad, then I don't get the money from that ad. That is full of conflict. Uh, it's funny. I had jury. If you follow along at all on social, I had jury duty last week and you would not believe how many questions both attorneys ask all the jurors to make sure they don't know anybody in the case. They don't know someone who knows somebody that might be involved with the case or that might have a bias toward a company that's involved in the case, right? Why? Conflict of interest. It's bad. It clouds your judgment. So that was the premise of the last two weeks. If I've been talking about those things in detail and encouraging companies to really reevaluate if your agency is charging you a percentage of a marketing fee because there's going to be a lot of metrics that are thrown out at you. Hey, it, we, we get low cost per click. Well, that doesn't really matter if that click isn't tied to a business objective, right? Or they're giving you vanity metrics like, oh, you got this many impressions, you got this many shares. Like none of that really matters if you're not accomplishing the business objective. And what happens when you shut off the ad dollars that are being spent? You get to see what your brand is really made of. If you shut off the ad spend and everything drops to zero, well, then guess what? You were just living on an ad spend. You really didn't have a brand. So are we going to leave it there? No. This week, I'm talking about what I think is the solution, and I'm proposing a new way to do and approach this model. It all comes back to this. I mentioned it in my moment of clarity today, is that people think in B2B or B2C terms, meaning B2B, business to business. I'm a business. I'm selling to a business. Or B2C. I'm a business, I'm selling to an end consumer, someone who's actually going to use the product. And I heard this, I can't remember who said it, but they said it's actually B to H today. And B to H is business to human. And because connection is so pervasive, I talk about this in my book, it's so pervasive, we are just wired down to connect, 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 connect. So we want to actually find some meaning and purpose and self-identity in the companies we do business with. Some of our identity is very human, like, I wear Nike shoes because I identify with the just do it, even if you, you could lose and it's going to be hard. You might not lose. You might lose, but that's not the point. The point is the pursuit, right? Okay, I, I identify with that. So I connect with it. B2H, business to human. There are two ways to get attention in marketing. There are two ways to get attention in advertising. You can either earn it or you can take it. Earn it or take it. And take it, you can almost blend the line of steal it, but I'll just say take it. We'll be nice. You can earn it or take it. You know the phrase pay attention? Well, that means literally, I think of it this way. I'm taking my wallet out 
and I have a wallet full of attention for the day, and I'm going to take some bills of my attention out and give them to you if you earn it. It's worth it to me. But when somebody just blows a message in your face, a price and payment, I'm shouting so you look at me, and I look, right? Well, now you've just stolen my attention. You've taken it from me. I didn't get to decide whether or not I gave it to you. And what are the things that actually earn attention? Well, that's what we're going to talk about next. Good brand building is about understanding and earning the attention. When you earn the attention, you build brand equity. You get people that want to gravitate toward your ecosystem, not just consumers, but also team members and employees and volunteers. Why? Because you've earned it. So I want to talk about the situation. We're launching a new company website. I don't think it's going to be launched when this podcast is released because Monday's a holiday, but we'll definitely announce it when we do. And definitely next week it'll be done. But we kind of outlined this process a little more. And this is the center point of how we communicate as an agency. It started out as our company values. When I made our company values, put them in the list, this is the way to go. And then I realized that this is actually the same approach that we take in good branding. So it was really cool to see like, hey, what is intrinsically part of our culture as values also are intrinsically a great way to communicate to other humans. So we have an acronym. It's HIAC, which really isn't an acronym. I think it almost sounds like a karate. Is that like HIAC? Something like that. But um, it's not really an acronym, but HIAC. So here's what it goes. Honesty, empathy, attention, connection, and care. Honesty, empathy, attention, connection, and care. And we're going to talk through this process, not like other values or like these have to build one on another if they're going to be effective. So when we're talking about how do we approach our advertising? How do we approach our payment models? How do we approach our customers? You need to follow this process if you want to connect and increase your quality of ads, people earning attention, you earning attention instead of you having to pay for it, you spending all your money on advertising, which is a tax on your business versus brand building, which is equity. All these things come into play. So let's talk about them. Honesty, empathy, attention, connection, care. Honesty starts with this. Be authentic. I know it's a buzzword. Authentic, right? You do what is actually you. As a business, this means understanding what you actually are, not your mission, vision, and values that are posted on the wall that may or may not be relevant to your current business. It takes a little bit of courage to say that, to actually look and say, are we really what those things say? Because I'll be honest, 75% of businesses I've worked with or have been around, go around to your favorite companies, right? Look on their website about mission, vision, values. You see if it actually matches up. It starts with being authentic always. Before you can tell anybody anything that's good or true or authentic, you have to first look inside, right? So honesty, what are we really? What do we care about really? What are our resources really? Is it reflected in the product? Is it reflected in the mentality of the people that work with us? Is it reflected in the mission, vision, values? Is it reflected in the style of our media? Is it reflected in the way we treat people when they walk in and out? Is it reflected in the way our company culture interacts? Honesty. Next, empathy. This is really ramped up as like maybe the buzzword of 2019. Unfortunately, buzzwords are rough because they take something that was once meaningful and then they just totally strip it of value because people misuse it or they just it becomes fashionable. Empathy is important. So even if though it can be more of a fashionable word, it's still a very important word. Empathy. Ready? We break it down like this. Strive to understand before being understood. There are a lot of ways you can say this. You've heard like, hey, you have two ears and one mouth, so listen as much, you know, twice as much as you talk. But empathy is understanding how the other person is feeling, what the other person cares about. Doing the work to understand before being heard, right? In ads that shout price payment, don't worry, the sale is going to be over, not lasting long. Let's create this false sense of urgency. You know, I think furniture stores are like, and auto dealers are 
they're like, hey, it's a sale. Well, guess what? The sale sign is like permanently on the front window of the furniture store. Every time I walk by, the same sale sign is there, right? Month end, everything must go, right? It's like, it's a lie, really. And so the empathy is what does the customer care about? What does the other party care about? What does the other human care about? Because I need to understand that before I can even ask you to understand me and pay me some attention. So honesty and empathy, first two, groundwork. Once you know who you are and what you're really about, then and only then can you effectively move into the next phase, which is understanding what the other person cares about and wants. In marketing, we a lot of times call these personas, right? It's a psychographic. It's not as much a demographic like 18 to 35. No, it's like these people like the outdoors and family and healthy food and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The second week I brought up the Steelers. Let's say the Eagles and the Eagles. So they're just like a really elite, intelligent group of people. And as we do that, we begin to understand what they value now. Attention is the third one. Honesty, empathy, attention. Attention is where this starts to come together. Now, attention is the sizzle. Attention is the creative. The creative is the variable on whether or not people like first, like you get their attention, their thumbs stop scrolling. Attention is important, but you can only get the attention with good creative if it's empathetic, right? So I'm going to pay attention to something because it's really creative and it connects. Oh, I just went in. It's empathetic. It's creative. And I like stop for a second and I look and I decide, hey, I'm going to pay this a little bit of attention. And if that creative and that attention getting mechanism isn't honest, isn't what you actually are, well, the whole thing falls apart later in the game and I'll show you. So we have honesty, who you are, empathy, understanding before being understood. Now attention. I deployed really good creative, the pictures, the words, the videos, the messaging to get you to look, not because I shouted, but because I drew you in. This next step is where it all matters the most. Connection. Connection, human connection, is the only time you build brand. You do not build brand if you just got a sale on a two for one. You do not build brand if someone buys one time because your ad strategy and your SEO and your PPC, like you just snipe somebody when they came out the bottom of the funnel or ready to buy and they happen to see your ad and they bought. You build zero brand there. But when you have honesty and empathy, do, do the hard work to get good, solid connection, let them pay you attention, then you can connect on the things that are meaningful. And you know what those are because you know who you are. You know what the other person cares about. That's when you connect. And when you begin to form connections, it's a human interaction now. It's not a business transaction. It is an interaction, one side and the other side. And this is different than a sales conversion. When you convert somebody to selling something, I get a sale. But when I convert you to my brand because I've connected, I get religion, meaning what I am as a company just becomes part of who you are and what you do. Honesty, empathy, attention, connection. Finally, fifth one, care. Care is one that we wrestled. Does this go in there? Does it not go in there? And we decided it does, and here's why. Care is your ongoing relationship. Care is you making sure you consistently and continuously pay attention to what matters to the other person so that you can serve them give them products and services they actually want, make them feel better about themselves. You can understand their needs and provide solutions. It's the ongoing, prolonged, on and on, down the road, over the horizon relationship. That is where you should be spending your marketing dollars. That is what builds long-term value and equity in your brand. That cannot exist in a model where the business pays the agency a percentage of an ad spend as a fee. Too much conflict. Even if they want it to work, it cannot work. So a real practical thing as a business is you can look at your spend right now and think, how much content am I building that's brand building and how much am I building that's sales content? It's a great way to spend. Do you even have a differentiation? Most businesses do not. It's a great place to start. So 
I didn't solve all the problems and answer all the questions, but I hope to show you and hope to have shown you that in a B to H business to human world, you need to rethink your ad strategy. You need to rethink who you're doing business with and if whether or not there's conflict of interest there where their interest may be standing in the way of you building a valuable brand that is the type of business and type of thing that needs to happen in a 2019, 2020 world. And if you're not, you're going to start falling behind and somebody who is going to do it is disproportionately going to gain market share. That's why I call it a brand grab, like a land grab. The people who get this right now, right now, are the people that are going to crush it over the next two, three, five years. So that's it. Part three of the series. I'm happy to say like we're creating a lot of content around this. We're actually working on a digital workshop that are going to allow people who want to learn, hopefully some of you out there to take this digital workshop and really dive into this stuff and apply it to your business. My agency congruent, um, we do this for businesses all the time. It's the process we walk down. So we're going to keep putting out content like this. We're going to have another level of content. If you want to take a deeper dive and obviously, um, if you're uh, a business, small, medium sized business, we would love to a large businesses too. We would love to take on, um, take on helping some more of you as well. So that's it. Episode 81 part three. I hope we did. Okay. Um, want to tag on a little bit at the end of this and just say, Hey, I'm going to be starting to travel around the speaking circuit. I'm getting out and about meeting some of you. It's conference season. So uh, I got three I want to tell you about. I'm going to be at the Automotive News and Hierology Convention in Chicago on September 18th and 19th. I'm just going to be around there. Um, Adam Robinson, uh, CEO of Hierology, is a good friend. And uh, so I'm going to go support that and also, you know, meet some people, be part of the industry. Um, in October, I'm going to be part of a brand new event put on by car gurus. Um, some of you might know car gurus because you shop for a car there. Um, I don't know, frankly, anybody at car gurus, but uh, they invited me to speak at this event. It's going to be really cool. Damon John is speaking. So like I'm speaking at the same event as Damon John, one of the sharks. So I hope to get a little time with him. If anything, just to show my kids a picture or get them on FaceTime. So uh, they think that dad's cooler because they love Shark Tank. Um, so I'll be there October 22nd and 23rd in Boston. So, oh, Patriots territory. Here we go. Um, and then finally, in, I'm going to be at the Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit or Automotive Attribution and Analytics Summit. One of those combinations in, in uh, Florida, November 17th through 19th, where um, I will be speaking again and uh, presenting some material on this. Aside from that, thanks for hanging in there. Hope you like the new format of the podcast, trying to do our best uh, so that you will pay us, me, some attention Hopefully I'm bringing you value because if not, you would have like clicked off it by now. So I want to thank you so much. I hope you have a great week. Hope you had a great Memorial Day and we're rolling into the fall time. So this is when things start to get fired up and things start to happen. So it's good to be together. Good to be part of that. Until then, pursue clarity. this podcast for nine months from now so thanks for correcting that we'll put a little disclaimer on the video